Hello, welcome to the Mill Creek Valley Subdivision Back Shops. I'm your host, Will Snyder, and we're going to talk a little bit today about a weathering technique using uh, earth tone chalks. And I decided to do this video to kind of walk you through the steps. There's been a lot of questions asked lately about how to use the chalks, so if you'll bear with me, I'll we'll take you through it step by step. Uh, one of the first things that I like to do is uh, get a little base coat of dirt up along the side of the cars uh, on the lower half. Usually, uh, and especially dark colored freight cars, have the tendency to get a lot of road dirt uh, kicked up along the sides. Now, I prefer to use um, an earth tone or uh, shades of gray to represent that road dirt in this particular case today I'm going to use um, Gunsey's uh, tan. So bear with me with the noise and we'll go through the first step. As you can see it's just some back and forth motions till I get some color applied to the side of the car. A little bit around the trucks for road dirt. Hit the ends a little bit. A lot of times on your lighter colored cars you don't really see this road dirt pronounced so much, but it does kind of give a nice little effect to the weathering. And that should just about do it. Now, now that we have the road grime applied, uh, a lot of people have asked what chalks to use and, and what techniques and what brushes. I like to use this particular chalk that I get at a local art supply. Uh, they're all earth tones. They work really really well. As you can see the, the variation in colors. I also like to use some backup blacks, grays, and whites. For the techniques I prefer a rather stiff brush. Um, one of the things that works out really well are makeup brushes. Uh, I'm sure your wives or girlfriends can kind of lead you into the right direction there. Sometimes if you have a large area uh, to apply the chalks with, you'll want to take and uh, actually scrape the chalk a little bit. If I can find my X-Acto knife here. All right, I'll just get a fresh X-Acto. But one of, the, one of the things you can do, as you can see, just take a Take an X-Acto knife and scrape across the top and get a powder. Now that's if you're doing a large area, heavy area. Uh, I will pick out a nice, here's a brush that I prefer to use. And we'll take the car and we'll basically just rub the top of the brush across the top of the chalks. And then we'll start just coming down the sides of the cars along the rib, uh, ribbing. These are areas that generally, raised areas, areas where there's rivets, bolt heads, all areas that have the tendency to want to rust first. Now the nice thing about the chalks is if you feel like you've gotten too much on while you're working with it, you can just rub it right back off again. A little bit along the door tracks here. As you can see, I'm right for right now. I'm sticking with just the one basic color, rust colored, earth tone color. And what I'll do here in just a little bit, I'll go back over it with some lighter orangish tones to look like a little bit fresher type rust. 
always be sure to hit around your trucks these cast trucks always get very very rusty and once you get the rust on them as you can see it really brings the detail out on the so there quickly is just one quick coat on the side we'll go to a, a little bit lighter orange now and then we'll hit back over top some areas to look like a little bit newer rust. And actually you can do a car right quick. The nice thing is, like I said, if you make a mistake, you could just wipe it back off or take a damp rag, start over. Now, a lot of people have talked about the necessity of putting a top coat over it. I have found that once the cars have set for a week or so, you can handle that car all you want, and it's it's really not going to come back off. Once that chalk kind of sets in and it adheres, you're really good to go. As you can see now, across the top with the ribbings. And you can actually do a freight car once you've, you've, you've gotten over the initial fear of doing this. You can do a freight car in about 10 minutes. And I know right now it's one of my favorite techniques for weathering. I, I really feel that you have a lot of control this way. And just the fact that if you make a mistake, wipe it off, start over. And a little bit of over with a clean brush just to kind of blend it all in. And I'll quickly hit the ends. I'm going to uh, just do this rather quickly and then shut the video, pause the video for a little bit because I just don't want to make this so boring that you're, you're not, you're going to lose interest in it. But you're looking for areas where you see the brake wheels always had the tendency to, to rust a lot and, and around the ladders. And like I said, once you put your dark on and go back with a little orange or yellowish color and get that that fresher rust look so let me put this on pause I'm basically going to do the other side like I did this side and we'll pick it back up when I'm finished the other side okay welcome back I've pretty much finished this other side and uh, going to very quickly here do the do the top on this side which I didn't realize I had not quite done but this only takes a second or so and again after you after you get all the chalk on that you want on then just take a clean brush and kind of go in and get all the harsh lines taken away and the excess chalk. Okay, here you got where rain would run down over the panels, so you want to kind of wipe it clean areas that don't get quite as much. Now, let's find. Go to my white chalk, and one of the things I like to do, especially on older freight cars, it looks like I'm going to have to powder this up a little bit. A lot of times the lettering, as that paint starts to fade and gets a little chalky in itself, that lettering starts to streak. So I'm taking a little white chalk and just basically, just where some of the lettering is, getting some streaking right underneath the lettering. 
and it makes for a nice little nice little effect and we'll skip some there the paint's not quite as bad right there okay and the last thing I like to do and I always find this to be a nice little detail and it's not dealing with chalks but a little testers rust and one of the things you notice when you're around freight cars is that freight cars definitely have the tendency for the hubs of the wheels to get all rusty so I like to take a little bit of testers rust and just come in here and lay it on the hub of the wheel and get a little bit of rust coat right on the hub of that wheel and you'll be surprised how much better your freight cars will look having those wheels painted the other nice thing is as you're running your trains with those wheels having a coat of rust on them you actually see the movement that you would not see in an all black wheel and there we go it's one side quickly do the other side and it, it dries fairly fast so I like to take a little bit of the rusty chalk after this sets up and gets a little tacky and just get a little bit of chalk right on top of that paint now one of the things you want to remember that most everything you look at in life uh, A is dirty, B is multicolored because of the way light and shadows apply. So you, you really, if you want things to look very realistic, you want to get that, that multicolor look. Because you're just imitating lights and shadows. Now, I am just about happy with that. I know the light's not the best here in the shop, so what we will do, again, I'm going to pause this and uh, let these wheels dry a couple minutes, add a little bit of chalk to the wheels, and then we're going to put this car on the layout so you can see it in good light and, and see what the finished product looks like. Be back shortly. Okay, welcome back, and welcome to the Mill Creek subdivision. We've moved that car out of the shop. We've actually set it into a train right next to another car that I had weathered just the other week, so you can get the idea of what it actually looks like once it's on the layout. Well, I hope this information has been a big help to everybody who was interested in trying pastel chalks. My best advice is just don't be afraid. Just get your feet wet, get in there and do it. If you do it, be sure to drop me a line. Let me know how how you did and what you thought. So, I right, thank you very much. Y'all have a great day.